and it's going to be hard for me to get through this, but okay. Wishes for me. I hope you learn and never stop. I hope you aren't afraid. No need for that. I hope you get old like me. I hope you laugh as often as possible. I hope you respect your heritage. I hope you ignore trivialities. I hope you become loved. I hope you never forget your friends. I hope you are satisfied with life. And last, I hope you love because you must. So, that's what I would pass on. Guys. It's like it's right at the top of my head. It's, it really sort of blew my world apart. It was Deadpool. <laughs> like, like brilliant. It's just right my sense of humor, you know, also is right there. And also the lovely, amazing Marita Bachman, who did some pretty amazing fun. You know? And did you see the killing joke? The killing joke? No, I haven't. I, I am desperate to see it. People have been telling me about this for months now. And yeah, I mean it's right at the top of the list. Once we, uh, we were, we're crazy with God, once the premiere is done, then I'm like, that's what I'm planning on my, my TV time, so, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, man, I appreciate it. Hi, next question. All right, so going off, uh, well, a couple of questions, but first, you said you'd want to be Robin if you could play a hero, right? So, which Robin? Yeah, let's just say for one. You know, let's bring it. Let's go old school. Yeah, so I would say that. So Dick Tracy, original. Yes, exactly. Right. And then another question: How long? How much time do they devote to doing your hair before each episode? It's all. So, so first of all, every two weeks I go in to get it redone. That takes forty-five to fifty minutes. And then every day that I work, it takes about. 40 to 45 minutes to get it just right, and you know, it's, it's not a lot of hair there, you know, but so it's just a testament to like, you know, the vision of our our amazing hairdresser on Gotham, Teresa Maris Alicia. she's like, she's just, she's the best in the business. What's up? Hi there, Hi. my name's uh, Brandon, it's nice to meet you, Robin. Nice to meet you. <laughs> my question is, speaking as um, both uh, yourself, speaking as a, both an actor and a fan, what has it been like for you approaching an iconic character like the Penguin? Oh my gosh, it's been terrifying, incredibly overwhelming, and then ultimately like incredibly satisfying. Like I've gotten so much good feedback, and you know people have like thanked me, which feels really strange. And that's part that's part of the surreal part. Like, you know, like like you know I grew up with these characters like everyone else did here. And uh, to find myself part of the world, uh, it's beyond. Like, like, you know, as an actor, you just want to work. And then, you know, when, when you go out for pilot season, you know, every year there's pilot season when they make all the new shows. And if you're an actor, you go on, if you're lucky, you go on 5, 10, 15, 20, you know, auditions, back to back, just trying to book a job, trying to book a job. Anyone wants to book a pilot. Whether or not it gets picked up or not, you don't even worry about it. You just want to book a pilot. And then to find myself booked, I not only booked a pilot, I booked a pilot that was straight to series, and I booked a pilot that's about the evolution of Batman. <laughs> it's like, there's, there's no superlatives that, that would even come near, you know, how I feel about it. But, uh, but you know, it's just been an amazing, amazing ride. And to be able to, again, to be able to bring something out about the character that people who haven't necessarily read a lot of comics you know, people who just have seen the movies or the television show, which, you know, I'm ashamed to admit it was me before I got the job, you know, to be able to bring things about this character that people never knew, you know, is just an amazing gift and an amazing responsibility, and I don't take it lightly at all. Well, I, I heard that in the, when you first started the show, you had a bottle cap in your shoe to do the walk. It, yeah. How much did that hurt? <laughs> Well, okay, so it was it was the flat side up, so I'm not crazy, but uh, but yeah, so it was actually the third episode in, you know, you know, it's still really new, and the 
walk hadn't really become, you know, fully ingrained in my body yet. And we did the one scene where where uh, Oswald comes back to Gotham City after being, you know, out in the country stabbing frat boys in the neck. <laughs> it's a family show. Uh, yeah. So he goes back to Gotham City. It was this big scene, and we're shooting in the dead of summer, and we're in Chinatown, and there's a million extras, and like smoke, and a bus, and all these moving parts coming together. And it's this big scene where I step off the bus, and I'm like, home. And then, I, then I'm supposed to like walk off into the distance. We do all of that. I go back to where my chair, I sit down in my chair, like, because they're moving the camera or whatever. And I'm immediately like, oh, MG, I forgot to do the limp. And you know, we have someone on set, they're called the script supervisor, and their job is to make sure that, you know, I do the limp, and that, you know, my handkerchief is in the right pocket, and that everything sort of matches, so that when you watch the show, you know, there aren't any, like, mistakes or, like, little things that you would catch. It's their job to catch it. Well, girlfriend didn't catch it. And I was like, and she'd come up to me the first thing that day, and she was like, you know, she was like, the other script supervisor told me that sometimes you forget, so don't worry, I gotcha. So I walk back, and then I flip out, and I go running into the dresser, and I was like, I, I forgot the limp, I forgot, I can't believe it. I, 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 I felt like such, like, you know, it was like, like, I felt like such, like, I'm just, I don't know, I'm not unprofessional. It was like my most unprofessional moment. And he was like, don't worry, we'll cut around it. My wardrobe supervisor comes up to me, and she's like, she works in Broadway, and she was like, what if we put something in your shoe? You know, and this is an old acting trick from back in the day. Stella Adler was a famous acting teacher, and she would tell her students, character's got a limp, put a rock in your shoe. And it's really a brilliant thing because it makes, it, 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 it's not painful, it's annoying, but it's enough of a sense, uh, of a feeling to sort of remind me that every step that Oswald takes hurts. Hi. Hello. <laughs> yes. Um, I just wanted to ask you about, you've done such an amazing job of all the different aspects of Penguin, everything from being, you know, the lowly meetup on meek little thing to, you know, the grief and losing his mother and all the other tragedies that went through to being the malicious crime boss. As an actor, what of those, that range of emotions has been the most enjoyable to portray? Oh, man. Well, you know, as, as an actor, all of them are, you want to play all of them. And I am so blessed that I get, they write me stuff where like, I get to, I get to be funny, I get to be tragic, I get to be evil, I get to be sympathetic. Like they just, you know, they, they use every color in the crayon box for me, which is so, so satisfying. But it's interesting, so like, for example, when Oswald in season two, if you haven't watched. Spoiler alert. What's wrong with you? <laughs> In season two, when he gets brainwashed at Arkham, and he becomes, you know, what you see after all of that is really who he is, deep down inside, underneath all of that scar tissue, you erase all of the pain that he's experienced, you know, that's really who he is, you know, I would like, you know, I would like go home and I'd just be like, yeah, today was pain, I'm just gonna go lie down now, and, you know, and then, you know, that was a couple episodes, that was probably the equivalent of like a month or two, you know, and then, and then he comes back, and when he gets his revenge for the, you know, for the, gee, I don't want to spoil it, uh, for the death of his father, when he gets that revenge, you know, I came back, and that's when I could really feel like, when I'm on set, like, being evil, and like, you know, being, you know, uh, unapologetic, and you know, just going for it, I come home, I could be working for 15 hours, I come home, and I'm like, we're going to the club. We're gonna go out. You know, it's like that adrenaline carries you through the day. It's, it's really remarkable. So I mean, I guess I would say like, you know, that's kind of fun. It's nice to have that kind of rush. But really, ultimately, all of it is just an amazing, amazing ride. So, thank you. Thank you. You look amazing. If you all haven't seen her wings, you gotta check them out later. It's unreal. Hi. Hi. I'm Tiffany. Uh, Hi, the Tiffany. Question is, um, what is your favorite scene that you've shot so far, and why? Okay, uh, my favorite scene, I mean, there's a, there, the ultimate scene that is my favorite would be the scene in the, in the first episode, in the pilot, when I'm walking down the pier with Ben McKenzie. You know, it was, it was one of those scenes where, like, you know, 
we are on a pier, and it's like, it's March, early March, it's like snow sleeting, cold as you can be, y'all are from Florida, so you don't die in like 20 seconds, no, no joke, so you know, and, but you know, we have like a crane shot, there's boats all over the place, and it's this hugely emotional, epic moment in the character's life, and thus also in my life. Like it was at that moment where like, it's the closest I've ever been to having an out of body experience, where I sort of like, in a way kind of stepped out of myself and looked down at what was happening, and I could see the whole trajectory of my life changing in that moment. And it, it's, it's just awe-inspiring, that's, that's all I can say. So I, I'm just gonna leave it at that. I mean, there's so many others. The scene when I get back at my stepmother, that was pretty good too. <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you so much, Nanny. Hi. Hey, what's up? Uh, two quick questions. Go right ahead. Uh, first, is Oswald going to continue to try to drag Jim Moore into darkness in the upcoming season? Duh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, you know, it's, it's funny because, like, you know, as you'll see in this season, which is why we're all so excited about it, you know, what we really discovered with this show, what really works and what people respond to the most are when these canon characters, when their lives start, in, like, weaving in and out of each other, you know? Like, Jim and I, when we start the third season, at the end of the second season, there's, there's, a, there's love lost, you know? He, he basically let me take the fall for the death of Galavan, this is season two talk, so again, you know, y'all... <laughs> anyway, so, uh, you know, he let Ben get away with that. He, he, uh, Jim let Penguin take the, the hit for that. And so they're, they're basically out of each other's lives. But as it is in Gotham City, they need each other. I always look at them as two sides of the same coin. They, like, you can't have one without the other. And his job is always... He has the opposite effect on Oswald. Like, he, he wants... Like, he has... He, he wants... To be, he's the altruistic one. And it's part of that, Oswald understands. Oswald also understands the darkness and how Jim needs to be dark to get anything done in Gotham City. So you'll see going forward, there's always gonna be, I, I equate it to, and my, I'm sorry, I'm talking about acting class in my but like my acting teacher used to say, like characters on stage, especially two characters such as Penguin and, and Jim, it's like they have an invisible rubber band between them that stretches and then further it stretches, the harder it snaps back. And, you know, I can just, all I can say is there's so much of that coming up between the two of us. So, yeah. okay. And then, also, just real uh, briefly, how much fun was it filming your very brief time in Terminus? Forget about it. I mean, can you imagine? <laughs> I mean, so, so you know, I, so I, I did an episode in season four. Right. Episode four, with the lovely Melissa McBride, who is... Goddess, guys. I mean, <laughs> anyway, okay. Uh, sorry, I put away for a second there. Um, I, so, but, so yeah, and so they don't tell you anything on that show. Like, they, they, it is locked down. And so, you know, my friend Brina, who played my girlfriend on the show, we knew that we found her leg. We knew that was over. But she was the one telling me, she was like, dude, you're coming back. And I was like, and this is before Gotham, and I was like, I didn't want to get my hopes up. This was obviously the biggest thing that I had done on television by far. And so I was like, no, I don't want to think. She was like, you have this watch. You have this watch. You're coming back. And I was like, I don't know, I don't know. Time passes. I get cast in Gotham. We shoot the pilot for Gotham. Then we have like about three months between the first episode and the second episode. I get the call, and they're like, they want to bring you back. No lines. You know, you're only in the first five minutes, but you're the first to die in season five. And I was like, sign me up, I am so there. And then when I learned that I was gonna do a scene with Andy and Norman and Lawrence and, you know, Steven, like, uh, it's just, it was amazing, just just incredible. So it's an honor and a privilege to be a part of the, the Walking Dead family and the Walking Dead universe. It's just brilliant. Well, I only watched a little bit of it. It's it's a, it's a, it's a, there's a lot of grown up moments in our show that's for sure that actually makes me feel really <laughs> talking about the show. Um, but anyway, so in the, in the show, there's a guy uh, named Paul Rubens. That's the name of the actor. He plays my dad. And back when I was about your age, Paul Rubens had a TV show for kids where he played a character named Pee Wee Herman, and it was a huge. I mean, that was 
it was like he was like Michael Jackson for me. Like it was like a huge, huge thing when I was when I was your age. And so then he got to play my dad. And so unfortunately, his character met some uh, let's see, uh, untimely. <laughs> he, he 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 died. He, you know, I was gonna say he died. Paul loved being on the show so much. He was you know he he you could see like he was just he enjoyed every minute being there. The crew loved him. The cast loved him. He, but he didn't, he really did not want to go. And so we're, shoot, we're shooting the scene where he's, you know, about to, you know, die. And, you know, yeah, exactly. And, you know, the way he dies, you know, it, he, I don't know, spoil the whole thing. You know, he's, he's poisoned. So he has to take a drink of something and then he dies. So the scene goes, you know, Paul, you know, Paul, like, toast, takes a drink. Sits there. Just sits there. <laughs> and sits there. Takes another drink. Perks, sits back. Sits back. And at this point, the crew, myself included, I'm like sitting there like, what the heck is going on? <laughs> like, you know, and then, and, then, and then the whole crew is like, everyone starts to like, you know, he's like, do you like have like a senior moment? Like, what are you talking about? He's not that old. But like, don't like that. It's going to kill me. Um, but he, and then he was just like, oh, am I supposed to do something? I just, I just decided I wasn't going to die. It's okay with everybody. And we were like, this is crazy, you know, like, we were like, oh, if only that were true. I mean, yeah. So I would say that was, that was probably one of the funniest moments. Hey, man, what's up? Robin, my name is Ryan from Puerto Rico. Uh, my question is, should it simple? But it's very really complicated for you to answer. You do have, you do, you have the opportunity to, to have a one-on-one -on -one seat down with Danny DeVito. What do you want to take away from it? I mean, that would be just like an incredible dream come true. And I, I think I just would want to like, this sounds dumb, but like, I just want to drink like a jug of wine and talk and, and I just want to hear his stories. I mean, he has been a part of my entire life. I, I don't remember life before Danny DeVito was a thing. I mean, all the way from Taxi up to It's Always Sunny, you know, I think he's just incredibly versatile, just incredibly talented actor. So I would just want to hear stories, you know, that's, that's really all I would say. What, and then what can we expect from uh, Oswald in season three? What can we expect from Oswald in season three? Uh, pretty much right off of the bat, he's making some moves to become the most powerful person in Gotham City. And uh, whether or not he gets there, you know, I'll let you guys see and, and figure it out. But um, on his way to getting there, we start to... Our show this season becomes, uh, in a way, more relevant than it's ever been. Because we start to address some things that are happening in the world we live in right now. And some of those things are reflected in Oswald's character. So, uh, I'm just gonna leave it at that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, man. All right. More questions? It's like that. So we've got. Right.